Today I'm going to show you how to change out a double switch. I'm going to install this new Levinson double switch. This video is for educational purposes only and only competent persons should attempt this repair. Uh, this one's quite old and it looks quite disgusting. Okay, let me let me show you um, how these work. Okay, this is your common side right here. This is where the power comes in to your device, your switch. And it can come to either terminal right here, either black terminal. That's where the power comes in. See, this is your breakoff tab right here. If I was to break this, then I could use different power sources for both of the switches. But that's not typical. That would entail having two circuits come into this box. And who wants to do that? We just need one power source to come to either one of these. It doesn't matter which one because they're connected by this brass tab. Once the power comes in there and the ground goes right here, then over on this side, we have two terminals and one's going to go to the light and one's going to go to the fan. So it's going to entail three wires. There probably won't be a ground in here. This is a 1960 house. Uh, so I'll just probably just tighten this down all the way and not use that. We'll have one power wire, which we call a line wire, and two load wires. One load being a light and one load being a fan. This is my Fluke 1AC voltage detector. And I'm going to show you how to test the double switch. I'll turn both off there and you see either terminal there's two terminals mirror I, I've shown you on the common side which is this side right here there's two terminals and they're both hot there's this one wire coming to them but it they're connected by a tab so that is your common side now this side here since the switches are off don't it does not show to be hot now we'll turn on the light and see the this terminal is then hot you turn off and that terminal is not hot hot not hot hot not hot and you see there's a little delay in this switch that's one reason why i'm i'm replacing it that and it's just disgustingly dirty but there's a little delay it, it, did you see that delay so i'm going to get rid of this and replace it okay this is the fan. So that's how you test out a double switch. These will just come on hot when it's on the on position. And this was hot at all times. So this one's properly working, but it's, it's old. It is not really working that well. So I'm going to replace it with a nice shiny new one. This is my ideal circuit breaker finder kit and this is my receiver right here and this is my transmitter right here and i have the transmitter set up with a couple adapters i'm going to screw this into the light and then i'm going to go to the main panel with my receiver and find out which circuit breaker it is and turn it off here i am at the main panel with the receiver and you flip it on and then you go over all the breakers for relative strength now go over it a second time and this time we're going to be looking for the breaker that gives a, a constant beep and there it is right right there that's it that's it turn it off now with the circuit breaker off i'm going to take my fluke 1ac voltage detector and make sure that there's nothing hot here in the box so i'm satisfied now that the electricity is off so I'm gonna take the double switch out and this is always a, a little bit of a challenge when it's been painted over about 14 times in the last 60 years but uh, you can just work at it and get them out one tip is use a razor knife around what we call the yoke of the device and cut the paint 
That way you won't be tearing off a big piece of the paint and messing up your paint job. Then you can pry it out from the wall and see you haven't messed up your paint job. Now let's see what we've got. Oh my goodness. Okay, this is the hot side. Remember we checked this out and it was showing hot even when the switches were off. So this is the hot side. Now we have the hot wire going to one of the brass screws. And then we have a jumper going to the other brass screw. So perhaps they broke off the tab and then they realized that they shouldn't have and then they put a jumper or it's possible in this era that they didn't have tabs and you had to put jumpers. But I think they just made a mistake and broke off the tab and had to replace it. So anyway, I'll just take this all apart. It's not going to make any... Oh, look at that. Oh, jeez. I didn't like the way they made their loops either, but that's, that's all right. We're going to get this all fixed up. Okay, so this is the other side here. And we should have one wire going to one switch and one, yeah, one going to the other switch. And we have a black wire and what appears to be a white wire going to the two uh, load switches. The load being the light and the fan. All right, so the white wire is going to the upper one and the black wire is going to the lower one. Okay, I'm just going to spin these screws off. I have no need for these screws. I'm going to throw this switch out anyway. So we'll just spin them right out. And there we go. That's, that's the old one. Okay, this is the line wire. This is the one that brings the power into the box. I'm going to mark this with a little piece of red tape. All right, so that's power in. The remaining two wires that are coming out of the box are load wires. One of them goes to the light and one of them goes to the fan. And the question is, how do I know which is which? And really it's quite easy because the whitish color, colored wire, which is actually black, it's just got some paint on it. That's an original 1960 wire because it comes from a fabric cable and it just has the look of a 1960 wire. And 1960 houses didn't generally have bath fans. So the older wire has to go to the light and the newer wire will go to the bath fan because that was added later, maybe 20 or 30 years after the original construction of the house. The wire going to the bath fan is perhaps a 1980 wire. It uh, comes from a piece of Romex. Uh, and it's it's really short. The 1960 electricians were much better than that. They wouldn't leave a piece of wire that short. So it's perfect logic, really. The, the whitish longer wire goes to the light and the short Romex type black wire goes to the fan. Also, if you look carefully into the back of the box, you can see that the neutral wires are connected together and you can see that there is a very short ground wire. Okay, I've marked these wires. The one with the red on it is the line wire, the one that brings the power into the box. I put some black electrician's tape on the one that goes to the fan. And I've just left bare the one that goes to the light. I'll remove any loose paper that's in the box and then I'll vacuum out the box. Then I'll use a two connector Wago lever nut. I'll put a grounding wire in the Wago lever nut and then I'll reach into the box and connect the other port of the Wago lever nut to the very short ground wire that's in the back of the box. I'll put the new ground wire around the green grounding terminal of the new double switch, I'll crimp it, and I'll tighten it securely. This is the power side of the double switch. You see it's got black screws and it's got a bronze tab between them. Because of the tab, you can attach your line wire. That's the wire with the red tape on it. That's the one that's hot all the time. You can attach that line wire to either one of these terminals. 
and it'll be the same difference because of that tab that connects the two. Here I've already attached the black load wire that goes to the fan right here. And I'm in the process of attaching the black wire that has some paint on it that goes to the light right here. So I'll put the wire around the bronze terminal in a clockwise manner, I'll crimp it, and then I'll tighten it down securely. I have the switch upside down right at the moment. You have to decide beforehand if you're going to have the light on the top switch and the fan on the bottom switch, which is the way that I like to do it, or if you like to do it the other way around, you have to decide beforehand. So I've decided to have the light on the top switch and the fan on the bottom switch. Now I'm going to put the hot line wire around either one of these black terminals. Just pick one, it doesn't really matter. Put it around the terminal in a clockwise manner, crimp it, and tighten it down securely. Tighten down the other screw as well. Now I'll turn the double switch so that the light switch is on the top and the fan's on the bottom. Then I'm going to take some black electrician's tape and I'm going to wrap it around the double switch a couple times for safety. Okay, time for the cover plate. Yay! I'm going to go turn on the circuit breaker. Okay, it's time to test it out. There's the light. It worked. There's the fan. It's on. There's the light. There's the fan. I'll put a link in my video description for the Leviton Decora single pole double switch. And this one is what they call spec grade. That means federal specification grade and it's commercial grade. So this is a good quality one. I'll put a link for that. And I'll put a link for the ideal circuit breaker finder set. You see me use it in a lot of videos. It's one of my favorite tools. And I'll put a link for the Fluke 1AC voltage sensor. Wego lever nuts. I'll put a link for the Weeha number two Xeno drive screwdriver. And I'll put a link for the Weeha seven piece 1000 volt insulated screwdriver set. And I'll put a link for the Kinepex electrical installation pliers. Okay. Oh man. This, this tool, I love this tool. I just love these tools. They're not, unfortunately, they're not cheap. They're pretty expensive. This is the Kinepex uh, electrician's installation pliers, they call them. But working on an old house, a 1960 house, these cutters, these strippers are so sharp. You know, the old houses, sometimes the insulation gets just kind of melted to the wire. And it's hard to strip. It's not like stripping new wire. But these give you such good leverage. And they're so sharp. Uh, I, and it gets such good handles and they're a thousand volt insulated for safety plus yeah they're really good pliers they got two uh plier deals going on here you got this for round surfaces you got this just for needle nose functions then you got the strippers then you got this bad cutter right here and don't put your finger in there it'll cut your finger right off <laughs> nice thanks a lot and i hope this video was helpful